If you like accents, you are at the right place. Welcome to my podcast, Worlds Collide. I'm the host of the show, Victoria Daute, and I talk with my international guests here in the show about the experiences they made in their new country versus their home country. In this episode, I talked to Nadina. She moved to the United States in 1997. She's from Argentina and it's still a very big part of her identity. Find out how a job for a fly fishing company brought her here, what kept her here, the struggles in the beginning, and still 26 years later. We also talk a little bit about her work with celebrity chefs Francis Malman and Pablo Marseille and what kind of record she's holding in the Guinness Book of World Records. Oh, and I forgot to mention that she didn't move anywhere. She moved to a small town in Idaho. I welcome Nadina from Argentina. She moved here a long time ago and now is in Idaho. Uh, hi, Nadina. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Thanks to be on the podcast. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you moved from Argentina. Mm -hmm. I moved from Argentina. How long ago? I moved up here on 1997. 1997. Yeah. Oh, yes. oh, wow. That is a long time ago. I know. And, and um, where in Argentina were you? Uh, Buenos Aires, from the capital. Yes. Okay. And then you came to, right to Idaho? Um, the scene is my first husband, um, he's a, a fly fishing guy and I got this gig to go to down to Patagonia to work for a fly fishing lodge and, uh, the company that hired me was like, oh, do you want to go to another country and do this? I was like, oh, okay. So I did go kind of around the world with them. It was pretty cool. And I met my husband in Mongolia. Oh. And then, funny enough, which I didn't know, and where I was in Patagonia, there were like another four places. And he worked in one of those places. But it was funny that we never like met because, I don't know, it didn't happen. And, and he was, was he Argentinian too? Or? No, he's a U.S. Oh, he was American. Okay. Yeah. And... Um, And so anyway, we took a trip up here because his parents, his mom lived like three hours from where I'm right now in San Valley, Idaho. Mm -hmm. And a friend, a mutual friend lived up here in town. And he was always like, before even I met my husband, he was like, you have to come to San Valley. There is this Italian lady. She would love to work with you. Blah, blah. And that's exactly what happened. I came up here the next day I was working. Nice. And I worked for this lady for 12 years as the head of the catering department. Okay. The um, fly fishing, was it also cooking? Uh, yes. So I was I was a chef. Uh -huh. So you go with them. It, it is it's, it's crazy. You have to be young to survive this, <laughs> which I wouldn't do it right now. <laughs> But you go and you work four months. And you work every single day, nonstop, because every week you have new people coming. And um, so I, I was the chef just to prepare all the meals for them. It was a really good experience. I did meet a really cool people too. I started working on this absolutely crazy Uh, food industry uh, because I trained with Francis Malman who is mm, one of our yeah. biggest uh, celebrities and I was 18 when I got with him um, and with Pablo Massé and we, we would travel, you know, they travel a lot and it was always like <laughs> a few of my friends were like, this people is crazy, this is too exhausted you know, I hate it and I was like oh my gosh This is so fascinating. Okay, you were you were excited excited about it, and everybody else was okay. This is too much. Like, yeah, they were thinking, yeah, yeah. these two pockets are like just crazy. And I think this because 
when my dad, who was a pilot, will, will we travel? To me, it was common to do it. Uh, okay, so you always traveled a lot with your family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but they teach me how to like, work is a little different because you go to a different uh, country sometimes and you are like, oh my gosh, I never be here. I don't know what language they're speaking. I don't know if I can find things. You know, you go through that stupidity and then by the second trip, you're like, oh, this is, you know, we have a menu. We have one day to prepare for 500 people next day. Uh -huh. I don't know. I feel like the adrenaline, it was so much. It was so much that it was fun. Okay. So to me, like, I still, like, have calls where people is like, are you free, you know, these days? And I'm like, yes, and they send me the stuff. And I never read sometimes who is the client because Sometimes it's the assistant who's sending the stuff, so I don't know who is the client. But, you know, you have yeah. to travel. And then the person that opens the door is like, George Lucas. And you're like, oh, shit. I was going to, <laughs> oh, <shit>. I was <laughs> going to read this stuff. Um, which is, you know, it was really cool. So I, uh, professionally, has been as crazy, as exciting to be on this absolutely roller coaster. You never know who's gonna be at the end of the table. But that was when you were still working with the traveling company. That was this it was before I got married. Yeah. Okay, okay. And um so what was your first reaction when you started working in Idaho? I was very surprised. It, the place is beautiful. But to me, I was surprised that I was in a ski town and people didn't speak another language. And up here, it's like, it's a it's really, really tiny city. Now, town, no city. It's a little town. Now we have a little more people. But, you know, I feel like I was, I looked too white to speak Spanish. So people was like trying to figure out, you know, what I was like. So where is she from? She doesn't look Hispanic, but she has an yeah. accent. Yes. And but and then people was like, I just speak English. And I was like, okay. I then had to learn to speak U.S. English. Mm -hmm. Because coming from Argentina, we do Eng English from England. Yeah. So I still... I still I still say supermarket, and people was like, where? I was like, to the market, to the grocery store. Grocery store, yes. Which is, to me, it was like, grocery was more like an items mm -hmm. than a physical place. You know what I mean? So culturally, I had to like, it, it was a struggle the first year. The first year, okay. And yeah. um, did it also take you like one year to feel more comfortable with the English language? Um, it, it did because I was thinking that I was speaking English and but I wasn't speaking U.S. English. Uh -huh. And also you had an accent yeah. and people sometimes had a hard time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so it was, yeah, it was, it's, it's still sometimes frustrated, but now they're older when people say like, what? Because they don't even say, excuse me, I, I'm. Can you repeat yourself? Mm -hmm. They're like, what? And you're like, I turn around and I like, I'm like, yeah. I have no more patience for you. I'm like, if you're not making the effort, I don't want to talk with you. Yes, I understand because like you've been there or you did that so many times. You're here yeah. for such a long time. You don't want to get into it over and over again. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that's one of the biggest problems up here in the United States is people like, are no open, no a lot of people's open to like the unexpected, like, you know, people coming from different parts of the world. So I remember when I first worked in, um, in the US and there was, it was in a hotel and that one manager, he, when he started talking to me, 
he started to speak up really loud. And I'm like, just because I have an accent, I am not deaf. Yeah. You know, you can speak yeah. in a normal tone to me, you know, normal volume. I understand you perfectly. You don't have to like speak louder. Yeah. It's not so stupid. That's the reaction. It happened to me too. And I'm like, but and then I learned that the speaking Spanish people up here, which most are from Mexico, they have their own dialect. Yeah. I mean, I was, I was, I did go to, that's the thing too, is to explain people that we speak differently. We can understand each other, but we have to actually understand each other. In order yes. To, and on the kitchen you have, you know, people coming from every every corner of the world. Every every country, and yes, but especially from uh, South America and Central America. Yeah. And uh, so I had to learn terminology so that I could talk with them um, the funny thing is my boss was an Italian. I, you know, I was speak with her Italian because I had no problem. But and then when she had to talk to a speaking Spanish people, I had to translate because she understand my Spanish. Yeah, we talk more like Spain. Then a Peruvian, a Mexican, a Colombia, we have people from Costa yeah. Rica, you know, things like that. And it was like... I had to like, okay, hold on one second. What are you trying to say? Okay. You know, I had to like translate it to her in a, in a way where she could understand. I imagine in Idaho, um, there are not that many Hispanics. Now we have. But when I came up here, I was like, you know, I feel like a completely outsider. Yeah, yes. Because like, I imagine was, Idaho is very much just white. It's just white to the top. Um, it's so funny. We have one of our friends is here in town, and he is a, a French-American. He actually has French parents, and but they came to the United States. So... He doesn't talk with an accent, mm -hmm. but he is, you know, he's um, he has a, a darker color skin. And yesterday we were talking, he's like, well, you know, I'm the only black person in this white town. And I was like, I, was, I never see him on that way because I don't think that he is. You know, he's darker <laughs> than white people. So I was like, and he has green eyes. So it's kind of like... You know, like so he's not he's not a typical blonde. No, but yeah. he's no like even a typical black. Person. And he feels he's already like an outsider. Yeah. Oh, he loves it. I know. In that first year until you adjusted, were there times where you said, hey, I want to go back. This doesn't work out for me. Yeah. And you know what it was the same, you know, we didn't have computers or so this technology. So it, it was, a, you know, it was expensive to go mm -hmm. home. Yeah. Um, I think that what it saved me, it was my boss. He, she was like, um, like all Italians, she's very intense. But she really made me feel like, you know, if you need anything or, you know, wh whatever it is. So, you know, just talking in Italian mujer, it made me feel a little less anxious because, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I'm, I, I don't like to quit. And I was like, you know, and I agreed to do this. Um, so she really helped me to pass the first year. Okay. Yeah. Plus, I was so young and I was there 24-7. All the time. Okay. All the time. So, yeah. Do you still sometimes get asked always the same questions about Argentina? Mm -hmm. I Now, I like it more when people say, it's like, oh my gosh, where are we coming from? Oh, it's like, first, our, our, Town got a little bit bigger, but I got more 
out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Now I don't care if you can understand what I'm saying. Okay. I'm sorry, I cannot talk. And if you can keep it up, we are fine. Um, but a lot of people now is like, oh my gosh, where are you coming from? And I say Argentina and people say, oh my gosh, well, I've, I've been there. I really like it. Or I want to go over there. I had clients that have friends that they come and ask me tons of things because they were gonna, they were on their way to go to Argentina. I feel like the last five years, it, it grew more in me and I'm more like, it was, it's not like before when I was saying I'm from Argentina and people was uh, from Brazil. Yeah, like, dude. yeah, okay, okay, but that happened like back then. Like, now they're like a little bit more educated. Yeah, I still had to like clarify. People say, Oh, that's in South America. I was like, Yes, and people has been like in Colombia, Venezuela, and I was like, Where do you see South America? is so different, Central America is so different. We have different, we look differently, we differently, we have different customs. I mean. People are still saying that Cinco de Mayo is Mexico Independence Day. And you're like, no. <laughs> really? I have never heard that, but okay, I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, up here in Idaho, people didn't go to school. They don't know history and geography. And you're like, I had to give it to the U.S. because U.S. is like Hollywood. They keep everybody in this bubble. And they kind of convince you to, you don't need to go outside. We have everything you need. Well, it's a big country. It and is. I have to say, like, all the states are so different. Exactly. You know, and I mean, like here, they are so proud to be a Texan. And it's so different to even the next state, Louisiana. Yeah. You know, and California is a totally different oh, world. Totally. And, yeah. and Idaho is also, like, so different. So different. Talk completely. I mean, the mentality is like up here is we are ruled by religion. Yeah, it's very similar here too. Mm -hmm. In California, but yeah, in California we are ruled by I don't like this. I cannot go and protest. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, it, it, with the freedom of things. It was very interesting the first years up here because I don't sound like anyone up here. I don't look like anyone up here. I don't make my hair like this big and put tons of curls like a cowboy girl. I'm Catholic. I was I was pointed. I was Catholic, and I was like, yeah. I'm like because up here there is a Mormon land. Oh, it's Mormon land. Okay. Do you go to church? I do, I do go to church. I more, I, I do pray in my home. Okay. I mean, like, and I, I have to tell you, I did go to church a few times, and I always did the mass in, in Latin, mm -hmm. and, and English doesn't make sense when they do it. So I, I kind of like my daughter will say ma, because I will repeat it in my language, or I will do it mentally, mm -hmm. and the church, the Catholic church. Uh, close home they have a young priest for a few years and it was fun to go and do it but when i go home in argentina i will go with my mom or we uh, follow a very beautiful father and you had to travel to go and visit him so it's kind of like i believe on the spiritual thing i don't believe on the institution yeah right so yeah. institution is made by men for men that have no brains. The spiritual is the poor guy that he was cross nail and you know it was more spiritual. Yes. Okay. But I do have like I wear my clothes and things like that. And I was pointed, oh I have a <laughs> my lady when I I will never forget her. She can say, Oh I have a friend that was wearing a cross like you. I was like, what that means? You know, and so I think it's good that you follow what you, you faith, but you shouldn't rule anybody else's life. Yeah. If it yeah. Doesn't make sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Do you still have sometimes have things that you cannot comprehend or that you cannot understand? 
in the oh, way yeah. um, Americans work in your plays and where you're coming from? I feel the jokes, like when they say something funny, like when they are... Are jokes. And you're like, that, didn't, that wasn't funny. <laughs> like, there are cultural sense that I'm like, I'm not there because it's, it's not me, but I, I learned how to deal with it because it's one, two million people. And I feel like if I had to talk about work ethics, I feel like everybody else in the world, except the French, are we are more a slave to work. Mm -hmm. And up here in a ski town, you know, if it's snowing and stuff like that, people will call you and say, oh, you know, I cannot go snowboarding. I was like, well, please don't come back. Yes. You know, thank you so much. Oh, you cannot rely on that. I mean, if you want to run a business that is not working, you need to... Yeah people that show up yeah yeah and i think that on that kind of situation someone like well you know you don't never know what to expect okay so you think more like unreliability and a different sense of humor yeah, yeah. that in another sense i do like because there, there are rules to things um traffic oh my gosh i, I go back home and i'm like <laughs> I, I don't want you to drive. Oh, that. okay. Yeah. Uh, because everybody goes like, <laughs> yeah. They do that up here too. But, you know, at least if they, uh, you get a stop, you get, you know. They follow the traffic rules and, you know, you get a stop over there. Yeah. You can buy people. The other thing I don't like is that they drink too much. In Argentina? No, here. Oh, in Idaho. Okay. They drink too much. Uh, no, I wouldn't say in the whole Idaho situation. I, I will say as a country. Uh -huh, okay. I feel like happy hour is too early sometimes. But it's not that they're drinking too much. For me, it's it starts too early because it's a day drinking yeah, exactly. thing. We don't have that. You know, like for us, we start drinking late at yeah. night. Like our parties are late at night, and here it's just eleven. Whatever, like you have your your first drink with your brunch. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, you can start legally at ten, at uh, eleven up here, and, and mm -hmm. where I, I am, um, I've been uh, traveling to Montana, and it was like uh, six in the morning. We they go to uh, have coffee, and the only thing open it was this bar which it was a trailer in the middle of nowhere in Montana. It looked like a trailer from outside. Uh -huh. You get inside, it was a full bar. It was packed to the hell. The gentleman that was um, next to me, it was having, he was drinking beer. And because it was six in the morning, he bought a bottle of whiskey, but the, the bartender was like, you know, now it has to go in the paper bag. And you had to open it outside because it was like the rule at six in the morning. So you can drink from, because I asked, you can drink from 11 to six in the morning. And then that five hours, it was like not drinking hard alcohol in there. It was like the crazy sense. I know. Interesting. Yeah. Every state has different alcohol rules. Yeah. So up here, um, you had a Sunday's rule. I think on Sunday up here in San Valle, you had to go after 2 p.m. Uh -huh. I think that they have the stuff. And in other places, it's completely closed. I mean, I've been in Salt Lake so many times, and um, everything is closed on Sunday. Oh, yes, because it's also very Mormon. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's true. So, I, haven't, I haven't been there on a Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And what is the drinking culture then like in Argentina or the um, alcohol? I think we we have that too, like we start a little later. I mean, if you if you are a sick person, you drink all day. That, But yeah, okay. But that aside, yes. We start later. We had dinner later too. So it's kind of like culturally we are... You're a, a very European, you know, we have like the tea time when tea time starts, it's generally five, 
sex, you know, you have you can have aperitivos or mm -hmm. you know, you start with a beer. Um, but yeah, it's it's later for us. Tea time, you mean dinner time? Dinner time it starts nine thirty ten. Okay, so that's a late dinner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is super different to hear. Yeah, totally. And what time? And at what time um, do people send their kids to bed? You know, whenever you can put it down. We don't. We are not like yeah. the the. I know it's kind of crazy, but to me, like raising Lola up here, it was like you know you hear like people that it's like by five thirty they are in bed, and I was like that is early. That is missing part of the day. And like, um, and I think that that is one of the problems for the snacking. Mm -hmm. They had dinner at 5.30 or 6. And then, you know, the body needs a little more energy sometimes. So the snacking situation is the biggest problem in this country. No, Lola, I think that, you know, she will be at 10 p.m. going to bed okay i mean we're we we did that in argentina we all and in argentina we started school at 7 15 oh early yes that is very early yeah and you get out from a school at i don't know 2 30 and but you know sometimes you have sports after i think that sometimes i will come back home more in high school and it was 8 p.m okay yeah and and you just eat doing homework go to bed or doing more homework and just go to school. Okay, yeah. What do you miss from Argentina? Everything. Everything and like something in particular? Um, now that I'm older, I, I feel like I miss to hang out with my sisters more. Okay, so you miss family and friends? And my friends, you know. All my friends really are over there. I mm -hmm. have more friends, actually, around the world than the friends that I have up here. And I think it's, I think it's a cultural thing, you mm -hmm. know. It's like, but um, I, I, I miss, if I really had to be uh, vain, I miss all the sweets in Argentina. I love the food over there. The food is everything. I don't even know what, what kind of sweets are it. Oh, my gosh. It's like, you know, we have alfajores. Alfajores. With dulce de leches. Mm -hmm. the, we have, you know, the uh, kiosco, the uh, candy stores? I don't know. So they have like 10 dozen cents. Um, I know the cookies. I know the food is so good. I literally, every time I go, I had to do an extra diet. So... Extra diet before and after. Yeah, and, and plus, you know, everybody's like, oh, let's let's meet for tea time. Let's go to dinner. Let's go, let's have, you know, a lunch or stuff like that. So it's kind of like... Yeah, of course. So you eat way more than you usually do, but you have to indulge while you're there. You have to as much yeah. as you can. And then I probably, I try always to travel light because I will bring in candies with me. Yeah, okay, that's heavy in yeah. the end. How often do you visit? I always try to do once a year for sure. Sometimes I'm being lucky enough to be four times because... Um, oh, that's a lot. If I have a competition going or I'm invited to be at church. What kind of competition? Cooking competitions? A cooking competitions or we have like, I'm invited as a chef to um a uh, food festival and uh with it and then 2018 where the pizza school i'm i adore this uh a school where it, it trains it teach how to make pizza and pastas and you know all that stuff and they they have a huge competition and with the, the guinness world record nice guinness book of world records cool yeah, for the pizza and the empanadas. Uh huh. So you had to make the most empanadas. And I was on the empanadas team. Yeah. So we have, uh, in Spain it was holding the title with five thousand five hundred, I think, and with the twelve thousand. 
Twelve thousand, you did. And how many people? On that, we were like just like uh, thirty-five people. Empanadas. Thirty-five people making twelve thousand empanadas. Wow. And we have, you know, you have an special uh, ovens that they cook like, you know, in two minutes. And um, what was the time frame for for the empanadas making? It was eight hours, and we did it in six and a half. Wow, um, dude, I was so organized. I was like, <laughs> okay. Um, and then my sister, my older sister, she was on the pizza team, and there was, um, there was, I believe it was a hundred and eighty people, because you know pizza has to, you had to have people like straight in the door. And put a cheese. Everybody have a a, a thing to do, um, and then you had to make sure that it was fitting on the box. It wasn't burned. So the same thing we have with empanadas. You had to make sure they were the same size. They were yeah. no burn, and you can put twelve in each box. Right? Okay, you have had to um, present yeah. them too. So I have. <laughs> okay, and who ate all this food? We. Uh, the school at PISE participates with uh, the Down syndrome and the inclusion. And we had two mm -hmm. our friends bring the water connection to their schools. So our friends that have Down syndrome, they are like just really, really nice young men. And then we'll give to women's shelter, men's shelter, kids' shelter. Some people came. It was pretty cool because this. The clothes, a diagonal, the face, when you go through, uh, takes you to the pink house in Buenos Aires. So they closed that alley for us, and it was people that came. Oh, but it, it happened everything. The night before, mm -hmm. uh, it rained like hell. So they had to get our stand, which it was really good because and then it was like so hot and so shiny. Uh, we lost power at the school because we overworked the machines and everything preparing. It was it was crazy. I travel. I flew Sunday, and from here, and I flew back on Monday. So I barely saw my family. I was like, because you had to prepare and do all this stuff. But it was amazing. It took you like one week. Uh, yeah, five days. So the pizzas, they did 12,000 too. Yeah. Or, so and people had to go to work. So it was kind of like, you know, I pay my own ticket to go over there, the school pay, the hotel, which was awesome because I could not have been going to my mom's house and take the bus going back and forth. I was there like 24-7. Okay. Are you mentioned in the, in the Guinness Book of Records? Yes, we are mentioned in that. We had two medals, two gold medals each. Cool. Um, yeah, no, it was crazy. It was pretty fun. That's a good experience. Yeah. And it's uh, a nice story for sure. Yeah. Would you ever consider moving back to Argentina? Every time I go, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm like, yeah. I, I never say no. Okay. And what made you stay in the U.S.? Because you said it was your first husband and you also have a daughter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's not that easy Yeah. when you have a kid who is started being up here, an American. And then I was doing my, my paperwork. The um, Twin Towers happened. Oh. So everything got, got stopped. So it took me an extra year uh, to... Uh, really, I had to start all over. My daughter was like two at the time. Um, but I was so into to the work that I was doing. It was, uh, it was really, really good work. I was being paid really good money. And it took, let's see, from 2000, I think that I got all my paperwork in 2003. Mm -hmm. And I still am not a citizen. I'm a Residence. Yeah. So every 10 years, I renew my residency. Because it really didn't come to the United States to change the status. And, and, and everything changed uh, where my country changed their lives to where 
It really protects you to don't lose your citizenship. Yeah. And then in the United States, it was like, well, this is so stupid. You know, you can be a dual citizen and stuff like that. You can't? Or you can? No, you can. Okay. You can do Mm -hmm. it. Um, So, and I don't know. It, it, It wasn't that easy. And then I got divorced. So that my ex husband, he's a really nice person, but he, you know, he's a fly fishing guy, which he's in nature. Mm-hmm. He, you know, um, so um, he didn't want to stay just in one place. Okay. But when you have a kid, you know, you have to, you have to go to school. You have to be like situated. Yes. And um, and this place is really nice. It's um, um, it's very calm. Very, I mean, you can leave your car open. Yeah. And you don't have a lot of people living there? Do you have like a smaller? Uh, so up here in some Bali, it's like a thousand. Okay. People. Yeah, small. And people has doesn't really live up here all the time. It's like second owner kind of thing. Uh, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, now with the COVID, we have more people coming uh, to move up here, like young people. It's a retired community. And... Uh, you know, to ski, you have to have money. Yeah, I know. It's an expensive hobby, yes. Yeah. Is there something that you really like here? I like the organi- I like the organization. I like um I like that some things do work really good. You know, like You mean like how things yeah. are organized? How people organize things? Uh-huh. Yeah. And um and it's like it's really sad to to know how bad Argentina they all, we have all these crazy people it just you know keep stealing money from the government and does nothing for the people mm-hmm. and it got kind of intense uh, we have a decade where it was like very very intense um, but every mm-hmm. time I go I'm like you know I think that now that I'm getting older I want to I try to spend more time, you know. Yeah. If I had to do like a one week because I'm going for a, a very specific thing, I would do it. But if I really go, I try to go like a month. Mm-hmm. You know, be Yeah, to, to spend the most time. It's a long trip, right? How long is the flight? Oh, well, just getting out from the United States is like the whole day. Yeah. Like literally it's the whole day. And then if I, you know, it's... I can do it in 19, 20 hours. That is a long trip, yes. Yeah. Do you do anything that is super Argentinian to you? Oh, I, I do. And one of the things is when people ask me, where are you coming from? I will always say Argentina. No Argentine, no Argentine. It's Argentina is how we pronounce it. I have a mate, so I can drink mate, um, dulce de leche. Yeah. I think that the way I think, modern, um, but mm-hmm. I don't know. That's a, that's a very curious thing. I never like really think. I think this just talk as I am. You know, I don't, I don't talk English or American English with an accent. I'm trying to, and I have friends, they do that. And, you know, because they want to prove that, you know, they are in the United States. And I'm like, ah, I don't care. You know, with all the languages I speak, I don't even sound like Argentina anymore. You identify through the language. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's me. I still don't make my hair. <laughs> everybody I have here, you know, where, where I am is a little more naive. So everybody is kind of like, you know, wearing makeup and... Um, all day long and, you know, hair or things like that. I'm more like... You're more natural. I, yeah. I think that, you know, whatever I can do to feel like I'm close to home, I do it. And and also, since you are a chef, you can make your own Argentinian Oh, food. yeah. Yeah. So that's one of the things. I sell empanadas with chimichurri to a place up here. Um, and when they invite me to participate in some uh, festivals, I do it. And like I always sold out. And 
I that that's one of the things I always like. If I, I and I'm invited to do cooking classes, so when people say, "Oh my gosh, how you do the chimichurri?" and, blah, blah. and one of the things is like chimichurri is an Argentina invention. All the rest is a free interpretation. And um, and I really like in one of the trips Francis Malman did up here. He was actually in the cooking class, and this lady it was fighting it out, and he was like, "No." Yeah, it's, Arge- it's coming from Argentina. This is what we do. We do it for the meat, but we don't do it. Yeah, on the same concept. You know, the people up here has ten thousand sauces, and everything has to have some dipping in. And you're like, mm-hmm. we don't eat empanadas with chimichurri. We just we eat it empanada. So you have all the flavors. And up here is like, you know, it's a mix of like. If I really had to ask you what you eat, most of the people cannot define what they eat because it's all this. Sh- things well my husband is uh, an example of that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm remarried i've been married for a very long time but he's like he actually chugs when we're going out he's like you know sauces is a no the food is a, a mechanism to eat sauces that's all i want you know and he was always for extra sauce like he just drink it <laughs> that's so funny oh. i know I hate mm. gravy. I think the to me the most offensive food is Thanksgiving. It's a hospital flavor. And like I still do it Thanksgiving because I did it for so many years. And I'm like the stuffing is horrible. The gravy has like I'm not a big fan of that meal. I like um the mashed potatoes. Yeah, yes. If they're not from a bar. Apple pies. I like the yeah. pies. Uh, not even the pumpkin pie, but I like the apple pies and the pecan pies, but yeah. only if it's not slimy. Yeah. And I also like the cranberries, but I don't care for the turkey. I don't care for the stuffing. Yes, and it's dry and has no flavor. It takes too long. And the sauce, the gravy, there you can make gravy really good, but... Yeah, I... Is that is that the brown? Everything's wrong about it. Cooking a turkey, it takes too long. Oh my gosh! Vicky. I was in Argentina. I was. I think it was last year. That's what I'm doing now. November at the end of November, I'm like, I'm out. <laughs> I don't want. You don't want to deal with the the winter. Well, I don't want you to deal with Thanksgiving. Well, I'm trying to like getting closer to Christmas every year. Because I've been not having Christmas for a very long time at home. But Lola is like, Ma, I'm going to cook a turkey. I was like, why? Buy it. Let's order a turkey. No, because everybody, wow, wow, wow. Oh, my God. Lola had the biggest glass of wine. It was already midnight. And she's like, this scene is taking forever. I, and I was like, I told you, you had to start like early. And it's gonna take forever. But they had, they were four people, and their turkey was like twenty-two pounds. And she didn't start making it until it was already dinner time. Yeah, that one too. So and I was like, okay, I was watching the football game, and I have like here too. I have Lola on my um, Zoom or WhatsApp video. Um, yeah, I was like, you know, every twenty minutes you had to turn around. Make sure that you cover or you put shoes. So they eat that turkey. I said, I don't know, at one in the morning. So she, she's she's not going to do that anymore. She learned her lesson. No more turkeys in general, ever? <laughs> Just don't cook it. Just don't cook it. Just don't cook it, yes. Yeah. When you first moved here, what were the, the biggest differences to you? I had to say, I seen the biggest difference it was, I was thinking that I was talking English. I was speaking English and I wasn't. Okay. The, so language barrier? Yeah, because my English, it wasn't the one that I speak up here. So it was, it was, it was stressful. I feel so stressful the first year up here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. And I think that that is why. I love football, American football, so much because I was trying to see what will I can like, you know, you can scream to the TV and relax, and then at the same time you will get, you know, these wars that you never hear before. 
So I send the watching American football teach me a lot. Yeah, that's so interesting. <laughs> I never heard that before, but also I don't watch it. So maybe yeah. that's why. Oh my God. They were playing, they were uh, playing some soccer and it was like the most boring scene I ever saw. Really? In my life. It was like, it was like, and the guys were like, go. And you were like, but that is boring on. though, how they presented it. Oh, though. it was so. If they came far now, now it's kind of like, but in the beginning, you mean 25 years ago? Oh my, like, god, yes. oh my god, yes, because like it's uh, so different. But I know in the beginning when I moved here, like people they always watch the Mexican soccer, yeah, because at least you uh -huh. know the guy who's talking, he's like super into it and it's like screaming, like, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's more energy, mm -hmm. yeah, I know. Is it, you know, in um, and you have such a big soccer culture in Argentina. Yeah, yeah. I was in home last year for the third game, which was amazing. I and of the they woke up, and I come back. I, I was flying in for the last game. I don't know why I didn't stay home because I could have doing that and stay home for it. It was Sunday. It oh, was so stupid. but you did not know. You mean like no, you never know what's I, happening, you know? So no, and I had to come back because I have started, you know, with the catering and the clients. But it was a, it was a, it was such a good experience. And where I live, where I'm from, uh, is where Diego Maradona moved mm -hmm. in the neighborhood. And I had the pleasure to actually cook for Diego. Oh, cool! With Pablo Masse, and it was it was really cool. He was really nice too. Regular people. He wasn't nice to the reporters, but to the regular people, oof. he was always take a picture with you, be very thankful. It was, it was, it, it was something. I saw the good and the bad. Yeah, yeah, nice. But it was nice. Yeah. That was a super interesting story from Nadina, I think. I appreciate her honesty and boldness about her time in the US. I think you can tell that she is a very passionate chef and person. And for a little bit more information, she competed in 2018 for the Guinness Book of World Records. And the school name that she did it with was Apice spelled A-P-P-Y-C-E and they train kids with Down syndrome to become professional pizza maestros and bakers and I think that's pretty cool. I will also add a picture to our Instagram from the Pink House or Casa Rosado in Buenos Aires that is the iconic governmental place and it houses the president's office. Our Instagram is called Worlds Collide Pod. It's just one word. And if you ever go to Sun Valley in Idaho, you can find Nadina's gelato place. And it's called Devoto Gelato, which also stands for the neighborhood in Buenos Aires where she grew up in and also where Diego Maradona lived. I will also add a picture to that and a link to that too. And of course, if you have a story that you want to share, you can email me at worldscollide123pod at gmail.com. I hope you enjoyed this episode and that you will tune in for the next one. I'm your host, Victoria Doughton, and I will see you next time. Oh, thanks for the interview. Thank you.